Hey, welcome back to the workbench. So since last time I have been progressing some of the bits on this board to get as close to completion. Uh, the first major piece is around each of these chips now we have a decoupling capacitor. These are a 100 nano farad uh, for filtering out the noise on the power supply to these chips. And also I've put a couple of extra caps here across the, the main voltage supply from our uh, serial converter to uh, filter out any noise coming from there. The next piece is the new crystal that's been added on the side here. This crystal is used specifically by the ACIA to drive the UART communication. That's now been wired in. And 6502 here now has its phase two clock wired out onto the ACIA and the VIA. So this allows us now to send the clock signal over to these. I've also wired the right line on the 6502 into the SRAM, the ACIA and the VIA, allowing the 6502 to tell these three chips when they want to, um, the 6502 wants to write. And finally, the interrupt or the IRQ line from the 6502 has now been wired again into the ACA and the VIA. This means that whenever uh, we're monitoring, uh, say, a timer in here or a UART, asynchronous communication from the UART port here, it can notify that the 6502 that something has changed and then drop into a routine to handle that. The next piece we're going to do today is looking further into the decoding logic, bringing this final chip in now that all the wiring across these is complete. Okay, so um, if we think of the address space as one long continuous block of memory, the first thing we want to do is split out the space for the EEPROM. So we can address up to 64 uh, byte, uh, kilobytes. And we're gonna take 32 of those and use that for our EEPROM. We're also then gonna say, take the first 16 and use that to address the first half of our SRAM. And then after that, we're going to use some of the remaining space to address both the HCIA and the VIA, leaving a block of unused space down here for additional IO at a later stage. To do this, we're going to start with using the address lines and some of the 74 logic that we've already added to the board. So we've got uh, A15, A14, A13, A12, which will all be used for our decoding. So the first thing we can do is say EEPROM. So if uh, A15 is high, then we are selecting EEPROM. So A15 will switch in binary between the lower half and the bottom half of the address space here. So that what we need to do is now focus on these lines when A15 is low. So in the next case, if A15 is low and A14 is low, then we're going to say we are in SRAM space. But if A15 is low and A14 is high, 
then we are going to be in this block of memory here where we want it to be either the ACIA or the VIA. In this case we should then be able to use the next two address lines 13 and 12 to decode the next piece so if a 13 or if a 12 we can say it's the ACIA or it's the VIA. There are some additional pieces to this that we need to take into account but we should only really be writing to the SRAM when the phase two clock is high. So we'll also have to build that into the logic as well. Okay, let's try and use our logic gates to try and construct this. So the first thing we wanna know is if A15 is high to select the EEPROM. Now, the EEPROM is selected when the pin, the select pin on the chip is taken low. So the first thing we can do is take one of our NAND gates, feed A15 into that, because we have a, a truth table here of 0011011. So A and B input, so the output will be when zero and zero it is one, when zero and one it is one, when one and zero it is one, and when it's one and one it is zero. So this means that when A15 is low, it'll go high. When A15 is high, it'll go low. So we can then feed this directly into our EEPROM for selecting the EEPROM. Now the next piece is we need to do the RAM. Again, the RAM is selected on low. So we want to know when our EEPROM is not selected. So we can take this and feed it into here. So now when A15 is low, this will be high. So we get a high here. And then we also want to know whether the clock signal is high. So we will also connect this to our clock two and set that to our RAM. The final piece is needing to know when our IO chips should be selected. So again, we want to know Are we in that first half of the memory block? And we want to know is A14 high? So we can take A14 there and again use this for our IO select. The only thing we then need to do is work out how to get the ACIA and the VIA selected, which is fairly straightforward. We can also use the pins. Uh, 13 and 12 and feed those into our ACIA and into our VIA. Simple as that. I'm currently waiting on a programmer to arrive for the EEPROMs because I don't have one of those. Um, when that arrives I will then start loading software onto this and testing it out.